Thank you very much, and, and thank everyone for joining. Um, I, I want to start by saying that um, there are lots of organizations that are doing incredible things in Israel, um, and um, uh, there, there are many of them, maybe most of them, are deserving of support. Uh, JNF um, is is really one of the leaders. I, I've had the opportunity to be uh, to be at numerous events, uh, probably probably ten more than you you just mentioned um, that were sponsored by JNF, um, in particular uh, in in the southern part of uh, Israel, um, including um, you know the JNF support for a. A school building that was uh, sufficiently fortified that um, even during rocket attacks, the kids could stay in their classrooms. I mean, uh, unfortunately, those are the types of things that have to get built uh, in Israel. But um, your 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 footprint uh, around the state of Israel is enormous, and um, and I'm and I'm I'm really delighted to to, to share a few minutes with you. Um, it's 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 an extraordinary organization and one that really. You know, you, you you can see the fruits of your labors. They're not they're not esoteric. They're not hypothetical. They're bricks and mortar on the ground, helping the people of Israel in ways where they desperately need help. So um, I'm honored to be a part of this call. Um, you know, I think the best way to understand October seventh is to understand um, October sixth and October fifth, and and the month before that, and think of what we were doing, you know, before October 7th, because all of our lives have changed so dramatically. I mean, just think about what what you were thinking about doing, working on, you know, uh, the week before, whether it was during the Chagim of Sukkot or before then, you know, I, I had just made a movie, you know, and my first time I ever made a movie where it was in the theaters. Um, very exciting. I haven't thought about it. I haven't thought about it once since uh, October 7th. Um, so many things that I was engaged in um, before October seventh. I just I'm just not doing them anymore. I just don't have time, don't have the interest. Um, so focused on how to bring Israel, uh, help Israel bring itself through this uh, extraordinary period, a period unlike any that we've ever experienced uh, in in our, in our lifetime. Um, you know, there's a. Uh, I like to say that you know uh, I'm I'm a perpetual optimist. As as, as difficult as it is. To be an optimist this day, these days, and you know, one thing that happened on on the Saturday of October seventh is we, in our in our prayers, we we began saying, "Mashiv Haruach Marit Hageshem," you know, which in, you know translates to you know restore the the wind and bring down the rain. But it's uh, th there's another way. At least I've I've come to look at it a little bit differently, which is, you know, Ruach Ruach means wind, but it also means spirit. And um, we ask God on that day to Mashiva Ruach to restore our spirit. In a certain sense, uh, as difficult as this was, our prayers were answered. Because if you think back on what what Israel was like, I, I can tell you, I, I worked nonstop trying to find a solution to the internal political debates, you know, that were uh, Israel was involved in um, back in September and before that, with judicial reform and all the all the um, resentment and hostility and anger that those issues triggered and, and brought to the surface. And I remember speaking, you know, I spoke many times to the prime minister and to uh, President Herzog. And, you know, uh, President Herzog said to me, this is the most dangerous time in the country's history, this internal fighting. I don't know how to resolve it. We're trying to resolve it, but it's 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 really difficult and it's putting the country at risk. And And I'm thinking to myself, Okay, that was that was that was then. Um, the one thing that did happen on on October seventh was there. There was an, an event of Mashiva Ruach. The spirit of the Jewish people was restored. I mean, you know, there wasn't a single wasn't a single person who had been protesting about not showing up for 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 reserve duty. Not one person failed to show up. They called the three hundred thousand people. Three hundred fifty thousand people showed up. 2,000 Haredim are all of a sudden rushing to uh, be inducted into the army. The the level of uh, the level of Chesed, the level of uh, I'm sorry. the level of um, you know I always put my phone on. Do not disturb. Forgot this time. Sorry. Um, the level of uh, support and um, uh, the, the unity of the country. Is extraordinary. Now it, it comes at a at a, 
enormous price, a price that we should never have to pay. And um, but but you know, but but we are united like never before. And 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 hopefully, this has been the this has been the great challenge of the Jewish people. We're we're great during a crisis. We're not so great when uh, when we don't have these crises. And 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 I hope that we're able to, when this God willing comes to a successful end and a decisive end, I'm hoping that we're able to uh, to learn our lessons and and take from this crisis the unity and the support that we have for each other and to carry it carry it forward. Um, I remember speaking with uh, the prime minister once when I was uh, early on when I was uh, ambassador there and I said to him, you know, what are you the most concerned about? What is it that, so I'll know, you know, how to react based upon how you react. What are you the most worried about? He said, I'm the most concerned that one day the um, Hamas will, will take an Israeli soldier hostage. One soldier I'm so worried about. I mean, that was his biggest concern. Now we're talking about you know, tens of soldiers and, and hundreds of, of hostages. It's, it, we can't even contemplate the, the the amount of stress this places on not just on the, the the army and its ability to operate, but on the people of Israel. I mean, we're not, you know, it's, Israel is a country of Jewish mothers, and we're all we're all, you know, we're all thinking about, you know, how are these kids sleeping at night? How are they doing? How are the parents? How are the families? It's it's a weight that we bear that's you know not like anything we've ever felt before. And so we just have to continue to to pray and to support our incredible soldiers. Um, one of the things that you know we're seeing like like never before is is this rise of anti-Semitism in across the world, um, and of course in, in in America. And it's it's incredibly hard to watch. Um, and it sort of you know it sort of proves the there's a famous saying that you know a lie goes halfway around the world before the truth wakes up in the morning and puts on its clothes. I mean, their lies are so much more effective than truth because they go out fast and no one has to check them. And we're, and we're fighting a, a world, uh, an information age that, you know, we've never seen before. People just, you know, the, 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 there's a, a massive majority of people in this country, especially those who are, who are predisposed to, to hate Israel and to hate Jewish people. They truly believe, just by way of an example, they truly believe that uh, that Israel destroyed that hospital, you know, in the first week of the war. That it doesn't matter that there's physical evidence, there's 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 visual evidence, there's uh, there's there are phone calls between Hamas operatives acknowledging. I mean, there's you couldn't, you know, if I I used to be a litigator, if I had to try this case, I'd win it ten out of ten times. It doesn't matter, you know. The the the, the there there is there is we we have lost. We're no longer in the we're in the post truth age where people just believe what they want to believe and it's very very dangerous but you know this is why we have to keep you know we have to keep telling our story as often as we can to convince as many people as we can um you know it's it's very hard to watch as you know a guy went to Colombia, got kids there siblings there grandfather went there i mean it's very hard to watch but um but at the end of the day we don't have a choice but to continue to make to make the cases we want to make i'll give you one example which i thought you know i was i've been on I've been on um, Fox every day for the last three weeks and other other you know NBC, Newsmax. But you know, just to give you sort of a, a, an easy example of, of things that we could tell people to just explain how there's so many lies out there. So last so two nights ago, there was a uh, there was a big gathering of over a thousand people that Hamas invited their 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 loyalists to come and speak at the. Um, uh, they 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 screened a, a video at Al Shifa Hospital, which is the largest hospital in Gaza City. And they had a thousand people there, and they had a big LCD screen that was showing, you know, the best of Hamas, the things that they their best attacks on on Israelis. Right now, what does this tell us about this? It tells us four things, right, that are not obvious, but you know, someone's got to sort of explain this. First of all, it tells us number one, you know, this idea that there are you know, Hamas militants and then everybody else is innocent and everybody else is being held hostage. It's not true. We have to re recognize the fact that there are 2 million people living in Gaza. Many, many, many of them have been radicalized. And so the idea that we're just going to wipe out Hamas and we're going to end up with this idyllic, you know, state of Palestinians living in peace, it's, it's just, it's a fiction. It's not, it's not true. Number two, we're, we're seeing that Hamas has, has plenty of electricity. Um, you know, they, they had, they put, they put on this, uh, uh, lots of lights, lots of place that I mean, it was lit up like any other, you know, public event. And then the the, the the other two most important things are this: um, you couldn't find a more um, you couldn't find a less sympathetic group of civilians 
in the Gaza Strip than those thousand people who are all supporting Hamas and cheering about the attacks of Israelis. Of Israelis couldn't find a thousand people less sympathetic, but they walked in there and Israel didn't target them. Nobody got killed. Nobody got shot. The idea that Israel is targeting civilians is a complete fiction. All right, and you can't prove it any better than that. And and the the fourth way, which is the most important way to prove it, is the people in Gaza don't think that Israel's targeting civilians because if they thought Israel was targeting civilians, they wouldn't have shown up to this thousand person gathering next to the Al Shifa Hospital, which by the way is the base is in the basement is the military base of Hamas. So you know we have to fight this fight. You know so many different ways we can fight it. You know we can fight it obviously militarily, and we're not doing that. We have these incredibly brave soldiers in Israel who are fighting the fight for us. And we have the first responders in, in Zaka and Inkhud Hatzalah and Magen David Adom and all these people and people in JNF who are building there. That's, those are the people on the front lines. You know, we're not on the front lines, but but we can do so much anyway. We could help philanthropically. I'm trying to help, you know, in the media, diplomatically. You know, there, there are a million ways to help. Everybody has a way to help. Everybody has God-given talents that can be put to use because this is the fight of our lifetime. This is our generational battle. This is, as, as people say, this is whether never again really means means never again or is a bunch of empty words. And so um, I see it's uh, 12, 14. If anybody has a question or two, I'm happy to, happy to take it.